some inferences about Bethlehem being a place, but there's a lot of grain. You see, it was the country, you know? And they would, stir all, they, they would store all the grain in Bethlehem. And they would bring all the sheep to Bethlehem. The best sheep in the whole nation they would bring to Bethlehem to eat of the grain that was stored there. And Bethlehem not only produced some of the best bread, but it produced some of the best sheep. And when the high priest during Passover or any of the holidays look for a lamb to sacrifice, look for sheep, oh, y'all know where I'm going, to, to sheep to put on the altar. They didn't go to any of the other cities. They said, we're going to go to Bethlehem because Bethlehem not only put out the best bread, they put out the best lamb, they put out the best sheep. And so God sitting in eternity, being omniscient like he is, gave the name Bethlehem to Bethlehem. It would be the house of bread. It would be the house where the grain was stored. It would be the house where all the sheep would come. It would be the house where the temple would ask for, for a lamb to put on the altar in Jerusalem. It would be that place because God knew that from Bethlehem would not only come the bread from heaven, but from Bethlehem would come the lamb of God who would take away the sins of the whole world. Thou art Bethlehem. Don't thou be small. Don't thou be insignificant. Don't thou be obscure. Yet out of you shall come forth one, the one. He would change everything, y'all. He would change so much, he would change even the way we keep time. Because when he was born, they just split it up. They say before Christ and after his dominion. He I want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's holy word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Saints of God, we're going to start a series on prayer. And uh, just want to talk with you about prayer. And uh, this morning, we're going to focus on two words in verse 14. The Bible tells us these all, and we'll focus on those two words, these all continue with one accord in prayer. We'll have four points this morning that we'll try to get to as expeditiously as we can. Uh, I want to talk with you about the subject of corporate prayer, corporate prayer, and uh, we'll have four points. We want to talk with you about the importance of corporate prayer. Uh, the effect of corporate prayer, the obstacles of corporate prayer, and we'll talk with you about the hindrances in corporate prayer. And so that'll be our four points this morning. Amen. Be in prayer for me as we uh, talk about prayer. Hallelujah. Saints of God, uh, the Bible says these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. When it says these all, it's talking about the disciples, the apostles. It's talking about the list that it gives us in verse 13. All of these, you see, uh, 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 Peter, James, John, and the rest of them, they all went to the upper room after the ascension, and what did they do? They began to pray, you see. Uh, this is corporate prayer. Corporate prayer is when you pray with other people in public. You have private prayer, that's when you pray by yourself. And corporate prayer is when you come together with other people. Now, some of us pray by ourselves, but that's not good enough. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Because there's, there, there's certain things that God can only do when we come together in prayer. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? You see, corporate prayer. Now, I want to tell you something, that the church right here, this is the first action of the church after Jesus ascends. The first thing they do, John Mark, when Jesus leaves, what do they do? They go pray. They come together and pray. Isn't that powerful? I want to tell you that, secondly, nobody told them to pray. Jesus didn't tell them to pray. He told them, go wait. But they heard when he said, go wait in the upper room. You know what they heard? Well, let's go wait and let's go pray. A lot of times when we hear wait on God, we think it's just sitting down doing nothing. 
when, when God tells you to wait on him, when you're waiting on your blessing, you're waiting on your miracle, you know what you should be doing while you're waiting? Praying. Woo, somebody hear me up in here. You see? The church came together and prayed. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that you can pick up. It wasn't just some of the church praying, but it was all the church praying. You go to a lot of churches and the leaders don't come to prayer. Here we have the apostles at prayer. Peter who walked on water with Jesus. James who was in the mountain of transfiguration. John who was the one who was the beloved who rested on Jesus' bosom. Them boys had to pray. How much more our pastors today? How much more the priests today? How much more all the leaders of the church? If we look at the church, amen, in Acts, the first thing they do is pray, and we don't see, amen, hallelujah, some of them praying, we see all of them praying. The leaders and everybody. You see? Corporate prayer is important, y'all, in every church. Our Lord said in his word in Matthew 21, look what he says about his house. His house. That's why we get confused. We think it's our house, but it's his house. In Matthew, he says, he says, my house shall be called what? The house of prayer. You know what he's saying there? If you walk in my house, one of the first things you should hear, see, and feel is prayer. When you walk in my house, prayer should be one of the primary things that's going on. I want to tell you here this morning, as a Christian, who would have been to a lot of different churches, the American church is not praying like that no more. There's no corporate prayer. Now, I'm not saying that Christians not praying. We go home and we pray. Or we might sit in church or bow in church and we say our individual prayer. But as far as us coming together and praying, most of the American church is not praying like that. Y'all with me in here? If you look at the schedule of most modern churches, they don't have a night of prayer. They don't have a night of prayer. They say, but we do small groups and, and our, our people pray in their small groups. Yeah, they pray in their small groups, but they pray about their stuff. They need to pay their bill. They're not praying for the whole church at large, for the gospel to get out. They, they, it's not like the whole church coming together. Let me talk with you a little bit more about this. Statistically, people come to prayer way less than they come to Sunday, Tuesday Bible study, or anything else in the church. Statistics say that only 4% of the church show up for weekly prayer. 4%. That means 4 out of 100. If we're a church of 1,000, which we're more, more than 1,000 now, I mean, we're more than 1,000 now, but let's just give it an easy number. Let's say we got 1,000 people, you see? 4% of 1,000 would be 40 people coming to prayer. Now, those that attend Thursday prayer, isn't that true? About 40 people. 40 people coming to prayer. 4% of the church comes to prayer, you know? Now, let me tell you this. If I told you that Billy Graham would be here on Thursday, T.D. Jakes would be here on Thursday, Joel Osteen would be here on Thursday, we would have to stop y'all from getting in the door, all of y'all coming. And if I told y'all that not only would Joel or T.D. Jakes be here, but you could sit down and talk with him one-on-one, -on -one, y'all would be lining up like Black Friday, sleeping outside. <laughs> to talk to T.D. Jakes or Joel. But every Thursday, we have Jesus here. And he's not only here, but you can talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. You can lay out your problems, your pain, you can lay out, and Jesus is here every Thursday, but only 40 people come. What does that say about the church? And what we think about prayer in our Lord, you see? 
Let's keep on moving. Saints, listen. Pastors were asked, what's your top three priorities in ministry? And the pastor said, well, uh, I would have to say uh, preaching is one of my top concerns and uh, uh, outreach, going out and bringing people into the church. And after we get them in, we want to disciple them and make them strong. That was the top three answers. Out of hundreds of pastors that were asked, what's the top three priorities of their church? Almost none of them said prayer. Prayer. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the Bible gives us what's called the pillars of the church. Now, those that's in Philly, you've been in Philly, you know how important prayer is to us. That's why we pray every day. That's why we have Thursday prayer. That's why in December we're going to have what's called what? All night prayer. Prayer is important. And people come in and they say, Pastor Omar, how is the church successful? How y'all getting people that nobody could get? How people, how people always pack? How the parking lot so packed? How they parking across the street at Super One? How they parking at the Clemson there? What's going on? My first answer would be prayer. That would be my first answer. The Bible says, you have not because you. And every time I ask God for something, every single time I ask him, some of those done been with me when we were 200, and we prayed, God, give us a 1,000. Give us a 1,000. Now here at the 8 o'clock service, we got somewhere near 700 people sitting in here today. You understand what I'm saying? At the 8 o'clock service. What I'm saying is I'm not bragging. I'm saying God is faithful. And if you ask God for something, God's going to come through. Listen to me good. I can't even get into the particulars about what we done asked for. But I done asked for something. Oh, we was over there at that little building. And what we did. Y'all was with me when we came walk around this building? And what we did, we prayed, right? Now, CVS wanted this building. Other people wanted this building. You know how many pastors that were larger than me came to me and said, that's my building. But we prayed. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We prayed. You see, because we know who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It's the Father's building. And if you ask the Father, the Father will give it to you. Little Gracie, uh, she, we was together yesterday. Mom was preaching and teaching at a woman's conference, a Latino woman's conference, and she did an awesome job, amen, on yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm with the little girls, you know. And they, they, they come by me, and, they, and I know what they want, just like your father know what, know what you want, and he know what you need. But he's not going to give it to you until you, so, so, so I know what she want. She got a little cartoon that she like to watch. And so she coming up there, and she like, hey, daddy, and, you know, just walking around like just, you know, whoo, whoo, whoo. And some in my spirit say, don't tell her nothing. So I'm just looking at her, I'm like, okay, go back, go back to your room, you know. A lot. Yeah, but daddy, you know, daddy, woo, daddy. <laughs> I asked, I said, do you have something to ask me? You see, some of y'all got a problem. You don't ask God. And God's sitting there, and you, 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 you beating around the bush. When you know you have needs and you know you have things. Oh, but, but, but pastor, God too busy for me. Listen, God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. God knows everything can handle. God not like you. You can't cook beans and okra at the same time. You, you're going to burn something. No, God got it all under control. He feeding the birds, the bees, the ants, the trees. He taking care of governments. And he, he have time to come down and get you a new car to bless you with a parking space at Walmart in the front. He can, he, he can do all that while he's taking care of Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. He, he, that's the type of God he is. But he won't move until you open your mouth and you ask him. I say, do you have something to ask? Because I want to give it. Oh, that's a revelation, huh? You know, the Bible says God want to give you some things that eye had not seen, ear had not heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God has for those that love him. God got some things for you, things that you can't even imagine with your eyes. You, look, if they told you the things God, God, whoo, if they told you the things God got for you in heaven, 
in his warehouse. Listen to me good. I want everything God got for me. I want the house he had for me, the car he had for me, amen, the marriage he had for me, everything, but you will not get nothing till you open up your mouth. Y'all hear me? And when you see somebody blessed, when you see marriages that's working, when you see kids that's, that's well-groomed, obese, listen, that's because somebody done got on their knees <laughs> and say, Father, I need you to show up for me. It's not because they're smarter. It's not because they hallelujah. No, 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 no. It's not what they know. It's who they know. Y'all with me, Silvo? I'm telling you, man. Prayer is powerful. And you got to ask God for what you want. The three pillars of the church, Acts 242 tells us. When I say pillars... I mean the things that hold the church up. While we was building up in here, renovating, we said we wanted to get these poles out of here. The architect said you can't get these poles out of here because these poles are what hold up the building. You understand what I'm saying? When we talk about the three pillars of the church, we got some people that want to take things out the church that's actually holding up the church. What's holding up the church, Pastor? Well, the Bible said the early church did. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's the word of God. That means that when a church gets together, they're supposed to really open their Bible and read their Bible and study the word. You see how much I study my Bible? The pages come out. No, Brother Hill, I got it. I got it. I got it. The pages come out. Of that. That's an honor. Some of y'all Bible too new. Barely open. You got it. Mm. So, yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Listen, this is not, this is not, this is, look, this, your Bible got to be a workbook. When you write in it, highlight in it, it's got to be a workbook. So the apostles' doctrine, the word is one pillar. What's the other pillar? The apostles' doctrine, fellowship and breaking the bread, coming together, hanging out together. That's another post. That's another pillar. What's the other pillar? The Bible says, and in prayer, the three pillars of the church. That's what keeps the church solid, strong, and growing. Somebody say corporate prayer. We got to come together and pray, man. We have to do it. We have to do it. The old folk used to say that prayer brings the power. Much prayer equals? No prayer equals? And that's the truth. That's the truth. Yes, 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 my friend. In the Church of America has a problem with prayer. They done canceled the, the evening prayer. They, it's just not good. Now listen to me good. It's powerful when one Christian prays. The Bible got a scripture, one to put a thousand to flight. But when we gather together, ooh, it's like a multiplication. It's not addition, it's a multiplication of our prayer power. He said, want to put a thousand to flight to what? Ten thousand. You understand what I'm saying? You would think two could only chase two thousand. No, 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 no. When we get together, it's not addition. It's multiplication. So I'm telling you, is if, if the prayers of the righteous, like in, in, in uh, James 5.16, the prayers of the righteous man does what? It avails much. It can lift much. It can move mountains when one Christian prays. But just imagine. When two of us get together, when 10 of us get together, when 40 of us get together, when 100 of us get together, when 600 of us get together and pray and seek the Lord. Let me tell you something. If one can move a mountain, 100 can change the world. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible said about the early church that they turned their world upside down. Because the church is not praying, we have noticed the opposite has occurred. The church that's not praying, that no power in it, no God in it, they're not turning the world upside down. The world turning them upside down. And we see a worldly church, Christians that's not living up to what they're supposed to be doing. Christians that's out there being hypocrites. And you know why? Because they've forsaken the secret weapon 
of prayer. Of prayer. And the devil, the devil don't like you to hear this message. The devil not scared of us, no. But he's scared of God. And that devil know you got a walkie-talkie on you where you could call God wherever you at. They got an old saying in the church that the devil trembles when the weakest sing, saint get down on his knees to pray. The devil says, hell, what's going on? Wait, we got to stop this. But when you cutting up, booting up with the devil, devil get out of here, boy. I was in the Garden of Eden. I saw Adam and Eve. I've been tempting folk from the beginning. I done slain many more mighty men than you, Samson. I done got David caught up in the cross. You're no match for me. But when you bow down and you say, I need thee, oh, I need thee. <laughs> that devil get nervous, boy. Whoa. Somebody say carpet prayer. Yes, my friend, it's important. Now, listen, let's talk about, uh, and I'm going to give you a scripture, Matthew 18, 19. Uh, I'm going to give you that scripture before we move to the second point. He says that if two of you shall agree on earth, touching, how, touching what? Anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Some of y'all praying alone at home and you hadn't got the breakthrough that you've been praying for. But God said if you would just come to prayer, if you would just lock hands, touch and agree with at least one other person. He said, well, two of y'all agree. How many people need God to move in an area of their life? You see what I'm saying here? You know, but you're by yourself. You see? The old scripture comes to my mind in Ecclesiastes. Two is better than one. You see? You see? He said, if you ask anything, you come in agreement with, with somebody touching anything. It shall be done for you. Listen, let's move on. Let's talk about the effects of corporate prayer. I want to just flip through the book of Acts and show you what kind of church the Acts church was because they prayed. They came together and prayed. Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 23, sound boot, I'm going to kind of mix it up. I'm actually going to my last one, uh, which is about wisdom. And then I'm going to come back and move. If you don't follow me, it's all good. I'm kind of kind of flowing with the spirit a little bit. In Acts 1 and verse 23, uh, because they were a church that came together and prayed, they received wisdom from God. They received wisdom from God. You see, we'll get to it, but when Judas committed suicide, they needed to replace him. And they didn't know who to replace him with. And so the Bible tells us in Acts uh, 124, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. And God gave them an answer. A church that comes together in corporate prayer is going to have the wisdom of God operating in it. They will make the right moves and not the wrong moves. We got a lot of pastors and preachers and priests, they, 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 they in a quandary. What do I do? What decision should I make? They'll seek out business advisors. They'll go and ask this political figure, but they'll never come together and ask God. And God gives wisdom. God gives wisdom. God will tell you. You see? Let me, let me give you another one. Because they were a church of corporate prayer, they had amazing power happen. Power and miracles. That's in Acts, if you take your Bible, Acts 2.2. 2. They had came together in the upper room, and the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. And it appeared cloven tongues upon their head, and the gifts of the Spirit began to operate. Amen. It's because they came together. God gave them what? Power. Because of corporate prayer. You see? He gave them power. And listen to me. I done heard many people in Philly get healed, y'all, when the people of God come together and pray for them. Healed. I'm talking about heart blocked up. 
church come together and pray. Listen, Dr. Cumberland, that can't find no blockage. None. <laughs> Dr. be like, what happened? You drunk some liquid Drano? No. Power. You see? All right. In Acts 2.41, amen, because they were a church of prayer, people were getting saved like I don't know what. The Bible says, then they that, then, uh, 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 then they that churches that's not saved. The altar call is dead. Nobody coming to the altar. There's no power at the altar. It's because there's no prayer during the midweek service. Y'all with me so far? And when you have corporate prayer, people get saved. The Bible says in the early church, 3,000 people got saved in one day. In one day. And that was because of prayer. You see? Let me keep moving. Listen, I just want to show you what prayer can do. Miracles happen because of prayer. In Acts chapter 3, Peter's walking by the man at the beautiful gate who never walked before in his life. His feet was all impotent. Y'all know what happened. The man was asking for money, man. Peter said in, in 3, 6, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what he told him, rise up and walk. That man began to jump and click his heel, leaping and shouting and praising God. But a church that's not coming together in prayer, they'll never have power like that. They might act like they got power, but they don't have no power. They got no power. You see, miracles are happening. Let me see what else. Boldness. Acts 4.31. I just want, y'all don't mind studying with me, huh? I want to show you what church, what type of church we want to be. And I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm tell you how we get that. In Acts 4 and 31, because they had corporate prayer going on, they were praying together, everybody in the church had boldness. They weren't afraid to share the gospel. We pray that you were blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time, God bless.